Yes, so I'm chairman of HCC Stony, and um, our purpose is to publicise and promote the importance of Stony Camp in Cambridgeshire. Um, Stony is a rural hamlet, um, and HCC Stony is 100% voluntary led, but we are part of um, we fall underneath the CIC, which is called Heritage, Culture and Community Projects, CIC. And the belief of the CIC is that if an individual understands the history and heritage of the place they live or have moved to, there's a sense of belonging, which um, helps with well-being and builds positive communities. And what we've found in particular is that ages 16 to 24 are now feeling very disconnected from their local communities. And um, the projects we do help to build a reconnection. I don't know if it's helpful for anyone, but we have been able to uh, gain funding. And I, would, I was very privileged to be invited to do a TED talk on that subject. So if you ever want the link, I'll be very happy to send it to you. Um, yes, so next slide, please, Anna. <laughs> okay, so HCC Stony doesn't have a lot of money. Um, it's our, we, we have, um, an Iron Age hill fort, it's the lowest Iron Age hill fort in the country at only two metres high. Um, and scholars believe it could have been um, the first place to be mentioned in history in Britain. It's an Iceni feasting and spiritual site, so Boudicca would have visited. So when you go, you're walking in the footsteps of Boudicca. But you wouldn't believe it because you've got a really, really untidy access road. It's only accessible by a four by four. So a lot of people think, oh, I'd like to go and see it. And it's it's dangerous to their cars and they turn around. However, having said that, most highways now are dangerous to cars, aren't they? Unfortunately. Um, so um, what do we want to achieve? We want to achieve promoting and publicizing the site. Um, and how do we do that? So we brainstorm ideas, working to our strengths. So our team um, includes some historians, which um, is good, storytellers, bushcrafters, a four by four specialist, which is also very good, um, and a professional archeologist. So from the offset, we're quite well set to set up an open day with very little money. Um, so our resources, our strength in resources really is human resource. But because we've got a bushcrafter, we have things like bell tents available to us. Now, what I would say on a hot day, on one occasion, we had four bell tents up demarking different areas of the field and different activities in each one. It was really, really, really hot. It was uncomfortable and people were perspiring. I do not recommend having bell tents at all. Um, and what, we end, what we've ended up doing, what we've come to recognise is that actually there's enough um, greenery around the site we can use that for shelter even on a very hot day or a very wet day so that's what we do we use the natural resources that are there on site um, who can we collaborate with well we collaborate um, with our local museums who are very very good to us they help with sharing their resources especially their roman and Iron Age finds that they have um, in their collections. We've got some Bronze Age items that they let us borrow. Um, and also they will come down and they'll have a stall and that will help them promote their organizations as well. Um, we collaborate with an organization called FACT, 
which is Benland Association for Community Transport. They are very, very good. Um, for a hundred pounds a day, they will do a shuttle service from two market towns to the Iron Age Hill for, for us. And it will be going all day, drop off, pick up, drop off, pick up. It's really, really good, very kind. Um, who else do we collaborate with? Oh yes, and we collaborate with local um, Cubs and Scouts. And um, that's about it really. That's about, <laughs> that's about the, um, the, the length and breadth of our collaboration. So can I have the next slide please, Hannah? Okay, so when we've got our team established and our collaborations formed, what next? Well, we have to publicize the event. Um, and I don't know about anyone else, and I know that we'll all be used to using software for promotion. So we tend to use Eventbrite. Um, I know that there's other uh, software available, but they do make it very easy and you can see where you are and you can sign people in as they come in. Um, we use social media, we use local media, and uh, that includes the local radio stations. And I don't know if any of you do this, but where we've got connections with local schools, and most of us have got connections with local schools, um, we'll call the receptionist and we'll ask if we can put leaflets into the book bags of each student, especially with primary school children. And so long as you put the number of leaflets together for each class, and they will tell you how many per class, um, they will distribute them for you. And um, where we haven't formed a connection with the school, we will look online, find the history lead, send an email, and um, also, if we don't hear back from the email, we will pop into the school and speak to the receptionist. So where we did that the first time, we didn't know how many people we would have on site. Um, and we actually had 350 people, and most of them were parents of and children. So it, it did make a difference, definitely. I've just thought of one more collaboration, which is really important, Heritage Open Days. I don't know how many of you get involved with Heritage Open Days, but that's fabulous. You only need really to promote one event for a couple of hours. And it really does bring people in. It's fascinating. Um, I think the last one that we did with them, because it was a really, really hot day, um, we didn't think we'd have many people, but we ended up with 75 in two hours. So I don't think that was too bad at all. Um, yes, can I have the next slide, please, Hannah? Okay, so here you see, this is our last Heritage Open Day that we did. As you can see, we've got our chairs and tables that we borrowed from the local church. Um, we've got artifacts that we borrowed from our nearest museum and we promoted having crafts on site for the children and that actually seemed to be a really big draw. This little boy here with um, the glasses on and the plaster, we put that together, we'd got some little um, amber coloured resin um, beads and they'd got real insects inside of them so he was hacking away to try and get his uh, his insects <laughs> and uh, yeah they absolutely love it that's very cost effective other things that we've done as well are copper lights I always pronounce that incorrectly <laughs> but basically um, we'll put a list up of what you're likely to find in the pretend feces, which is um, brown plasticine. And we spend a long time collecting cherry pips and apple pips and 
all these kind of things. And then you have to guess, is it a Viking? Is it a Roman? Oh, yes, olive pips. <laughs> this, this kind of thing. And um, they absolutely love that. Parents also like um, if you've got some colouring pencils and pens and if you just download resources from Twinkle and uh, the BBC website, these kind of places. You can get um, crosswords um, based on Boudicca and the Iceni that works for us, obviously, because we've got an Iceni Iron Age hill fort, but there's so many resources in so many different times in history that you can just download even, even pictures for them to color in. Parents seem to like that. This, this picture um, on my right, I, I think it will be the same with you all, um, with the family just walking along, that was a natural picture, that wasn't staged. So as you can see, um, families like walking around uh, the natural site, it's four acres, so they've got a long way to go around um, because the hill site stayed as it was for 2000 years pretty much until the dig for victory campaign and then it was set to agriculture um, and in the 1990s the archaeologists that um, dug there found uh, the 1940s aerial photography and they set it back to how it was so it's got embankments and it's it, and it's curved to where the palestrade was etc so yeah, you've got some dips, there's a little lake there. Um, it's like walking out to sea and trying to find your way back, it's not straight. <laughs> um, yes, so can I have the next slide please, Hannah? Oh, thank you. Now here, this was very inexpensive to do. These photos here are of our local cubs. Um, so we had one set, as you can see, uh, as uh, Celts and one set of, as Romans. And we went in and we helped them make their shields, I explained the differences in the shields and the difference between a Roman warrior and an Iron Age warrior. So they did a few warm up exercises. And then we wrote a play for them to present to their parents, which was really, really lovely. And then we gave the parents a guided tour of the site, um, which equally was lovely. And then the children just went mad running around fighting each other <laughs> with their to toy swords and what have you. Um, but that was, that was a very successful day. And yes, if anybody has difficulty making connections with youth organisations, definitely start with the schools and find out who the history lead is and start by sending a gentle email. And I know that um, schools are very, very busy, but our museums and our heritage sites have so much to offer. Um, and it really does help the school with their curriculum. And if you, are prepared to put something on for them where they don't have to do any work but turn up. They, they like that, they love it. And the children love it too because they get a chance to get away from their desk. So, so that's me for now. Does anybody have any questions? It was very quick, I know. No, that was fantastic. Thank you so much, Amanda. Um, I'll just stop sharing so we can sort of see each other. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, it's 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 fascinating because you know quite often you hear so much from people who've got kind of you know oh been given big grant to do something. Uh, yeah. We've got loads of people here to to help arrange something. So actually to to hear 
how you can do something with the the fantastic team that you've obviously established already um and uh, and uh, limited limited financial resources it's it's wonderful to see that that going so well um and the range of um events and activities you've been able to to do um just before i i throw out to the the, the sort of wider audiences um just I mean that that mix of skills that you've obviously got within your your group from mm. storytellers to archaeologists and historians um is that something that's grown organically have you kind of identified yes. gaps and sort of kind of uh, asked asked around to, to plug those or... yes it has um what happened was initially um I, I was fortunate to be chairman of March Museum which is um our local market town and um, years ago when I was at school a teenager um, our history teacher head of history managed to gain funding for <laughs> sorry about my talk <laughs> managed to gain funding um, for us to do digs at the site in the 1980s um, which was with Tim Potter from the British Museum and it was absolutely fabulous and what was discovered then in the 80s is that to the north of the Iron Age hill fort was actually um, a Roman town and it was the om only civilian Roman town in the Cambridgeshire Fens. And they had built in the first century AD a massive um, stone building, which was at least two stories high. And it was intimidatingly looking over the Iceni's feasting site, which um, does marry up with uh, the fact that archaeologists believe the site itself was a battle site between the Iceni and Romans. That's why um, it's believed to have been the first site to have entered the historical account through Tacitus um, in 47 AD. So it's not to do with the Boudican revolt. But prior to that, um, when the, so coinage tells us um, that when the Romans first invaded Britain, um, the client king was a man called Anted, and he is believed to have been Prasutagus's father and Boudicca's father-in-law. So, and, and what's been discovered at the camp itself is, um, is lots of skeletons, skeletons with sword marks. There's um, a skull of a three to four year old. We can't, the, the child is so young that carbon dating can't tell us if it's male or female, but the skull has actually been hacked in half. Um, so something very brutal happened there. However, having said that, when you go and you know that if you dig, what you're going to find is lots and lots of skeletons. Um, it isn't, uh, <laughs> everybody wants me at the moment, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it, it doesn't feel like it's a brutal sight. It feels very calm, in fact, um, and beautiful and a really nice place, a really nice place to be. Um, I'm can you can you just give me one second, Hannah? Is that okay? Thank you. I won't be a second. She really is in demand. I think I don't think I've ever heard the use of brown plasticine in quite the same way. So uh, I'm I'm going to have to take that note away for uh, future future activities. I think, um, but we'll try and get. Uh, um, details of her uh, Amanda's TED talk as well, so I can circulate those uh, as part of part of uh, details I'm, of this. I'm sorry, no, I'm you're all right. Sorry. We're gonna we're gonna mine <laughs> mine your information for your TED talk details if that's all right as uh, as well. Yes, got a couple of chats in uh, questions in the in the chat. Um, so you sort of kind of picked up on on the kind of your team, I guess, um, as as part of um part of that and volunteers and where you. Well, Zoe, do you want to do you want to ask your your question? Yes. Me try and paraphrase it, or are you? There we go. Hello, hi, Hello. Zoe here. I'm from Avoncroft Museum, and we we are looking at developing our kind of family friendly offer, especially during the holidays. And, yes. Um, uh, and, and we do schools, etc. As well, and we've got we've got a huge range of topics that we could draw on, um, but it's the resource that you need to 
to deliver it that's that that we we um we need to build up yes. um so so really just just interested to know you know lovely exciting activities that you're doing and and the concepts presumably are coming from your team of volunteers as well yes they do and, and, but where do, do you draw your volunteers from do you, do, you, do you find that a lot of them are do have a teaching background or... I was saying about that yeah. wasn't I sorry yes so sorry I, I arrived a bit late so um sorry all oh, right no but I went off on a tangent so you're fine mm. <laughs> um yeah so so I used to be a chairman of of a local museum in March um and uh, <laughs> yes um, I'm sorry I'm only laughing because of the dog I apologize um Yes, so people would come in to the museum, they'd find about the, out about the local history, and then we found a core group that were very interested in the history of Stony Camp. And really that's where our volunteer base started. And it seemed to grow to the point that I couldn't keep managing, chairing the museum and looking at expanding what we do at Stony Camp. So uh, I left one and embraced the other. But uh, yes, all the volunteers came along with us. However, on the subject of school teachers, um, the, a lot of the volunteers at March Museum were ex-school teachers. In fact, most of them taught me. So, <laughs> so they haven't come with us. They've they've stayed with the museum. We we don't tend to have school teachers in the group, um, but we've got other um, we've got other skill bases that bring uh, an extra dynamic to the group, which is really really helpful. Fantastic, uh, Peter. You were talk, uh, asking about. Um sort of advertising and promotion, I guess, and engagement, yeah? Oh, right, yes. I thought about using social media at all, uh, like a Facebook group or a website to try to draw attention to your activities, is my question. Yes, we, we work heavily with social media. So what we will do is we'll set our activity up in Eventbrite, and then we will use, um, we will use, the URL from Eventbrite to go onto social media and it works really well. We'll use LinkedIn as well, not just Facebook. Um, Instagram we'll use, but Instagram is, it really annoys me because you can't actually put a URL in that will work. It, you can't click on the link in Instagram. Um, yes, so X, formerly Twitter, we will use. Um, and that seems to that seems to work very well because most parents are using social media. They are connected with it. So yeah, we will get children and parents come along from social media. But definitely look at the event right because once you put your details in, um, say for example, um, what your organisation does, you only need to do that the once. It takes a while to do it the first time around. But then whatever event you're doing, it's just so easy to upload it. And then you've got all these wonderful um, looking adverts that go out. And I'm right in thinking Eventbrite also then you can, people can select to follow to find out if you've got other, other things. That's isn't that? right. Yeah. That's so again, right. you've got, I guess that's the opportunity then for future engagement with the same, same audience uh, via another channel. That's absolutely true, Hannah. And the moment you publish, the moment you hit publish, that will go out to all of those people that have followed you. And if people have um, then looked at the event, Eventbrite will send a reminder, or oh, you've clicked on this, are you going to book? It's good. And Excellent. They're, they're it doing it for you. Yes. Yes, they are. Yeah, yeah. And even if it doesn't cost anything for somebody to go to an event you're putting on a free of charge event most of us do this don't we um you can still you can still advertise it free of charge and it's brilliant because you're getting the message out there um and it isn't um well you're just getting the message out there and it's easily done that's yeah fantastic george you've <laughs> got your your hand up very quietly there 
going on. We can't can't quite. Sorry, guys. <coughs> no, you're right. <laughs> I've got I've got two computers on the go, and one of them works with the mouse, and the other one this one doesn't. Um, yeah, I, <clears throat> I in your contacts with the schools. Yes. How how easy it is for you to contact the schools? Do they respond reasonably? Most of them do. We've hmm. only ever had one school where we didn't hear anything. So we went down to the receptionist on the off chance. The head teacher came out and refused to put the flyers in the book bags. But that's only one school. Yeah, um, I ask because I've got a, uh, a client who are trying to sort of get a lot of community engagement with their project and they seem to with the schools they seem to come up to a, a brick wall yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, which uh, um do you yeah, know george okay. my suggestion is to that do the work for them Mm. So, like I said, if you find out from or if your organisation finds out from the receptionist how many children are in each class, take your bundles of flyers, A5, mm. go down, they're there ready in the bundles, right size for the class, and it takes mm. no time at all to put these items in the book bags yeah. with well, the actually, other items. <clears throat> this project to try and sort of get the schools engaged in a practical way. Right. Um, the it's all part of a um, an HLF development that's ongoing. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, um, and actually, I, I've <clears throat> um, quite often have suggested to volunteer groups that uh, or volunteer museums that they organize themselves a bit like the uh, the railway museums and such who are organized uh, and you get a volunteer who has absolute responsibility for running a session you yes. know um, yeah. and uh, I've, I've, I've just made a note to myself that this is what they should do is one get a volunteer or a trustee who yes. Is, Head, head of <laughs> education and making those contacts. Um, but as I say, it, I, I was surprised when I uh, had a meeting a few months ago to, to hear that um, the project team had approached the local schools to, to get them practically engaged in the project. Yes. Uh, came up with a big blank zero, you know. <laughs> So, um, and what is it? What is it that they, uh, the organisation, want to promote, George? Do you, Do you know where are they saying practically involved? In what way do they mean? Um, in in ways of say, one of the big things is, um, simple collection care, simple documentation. Oh, fantastic! Uh, and, um. Uh, 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 and that that sort of thing, and and it, it could be more in, in um, say it's it's an HLF development, yeah. Uh, but it's it's actually a, a windmill with a uh, an agricultural and social history collection, and um, that sounds fascinating. It re it really it does. Is in parts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what I would do in in that case, um, if I was working with that organisation, I would advertise for a young person to come forward and start up a young historians group. Right. And then I would be targeting mm. teenagers rather than children, so young people, um, and I would go from there. We, we tended, to, well, I'm going to go back to having my museum head on now. We started up a, a young historians group and we managed to um, recruit um, an archaeologist that had just qualified from university and he wanted to go into teaching. So this was a really good project for him. 
And um, because he hadn't long left school, he'd got a good connection with the schools and with the teachers. And because, you know, he qualified in archaeology, he was seen as um, quite an inspirational young man as far as uh, the, the teachers were concerned. So they were happy to promote this group and encourage people to come along. Yeah, um, that sounds like the that best sounds way. sounds like a really good idea to I could talk to them because uh, I'm I, I'm just a, a humble consultant on the collection care side, but uh, um, I do like to throw in my two pennies there now and then. And what you're saying now just reminded me that at this uh, meeting. <coughs> uh, which was to get engaged with the wider community, tell people what's going on and where we were going. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> the the proportion of grey hair and baldness to um, to youth was really quite uh, startling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that, uh, that's. That's true, it, it, and that's the same, I think, across the nation. Yeah. I really yeah. do. Yeah. Uh, and I think this is a... Because it's... The, 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 place, the place it is is quite a... Um, uh, what's, uh, there is quite a good community involvement in, in, this, in this village um, because of the history of the village and everything that's... Um, but um, yeah, uh, you you you've you've uh, put some ideas into my head, which I can throw out. That's good. I'm pleased. That, thank you. They might, okay, they might su tell me successful to... session. There we go. Yeah, George. yeah they, they just might tell me to yeah mind your own business, George. But uh, <laughs> I think... you you get that you you get that report done. <laughs> I think sometimes from my experience, it's also it's finding the right person. So Zoe's put a great thing in the chat about, you know, sometimes it's to do with um, time scales and lead in yeah. times. And sometimes, you know, you get a brick wall initially, but, you know, you then find the right person to talk to and it's open doors all the way. Um, but I guess it again depends on your if it's a heritage funded um, development phase, actually how far down the line uh, mm. can can yeah. they actively get involved yeah. and. You know, will it be a different person uh, um, as the gatekeeper into that that school or that community group yeah, by a, the time it starts? So that is always a problem. So. Yeah. But equally an opportunity. So you know, yeah. ne never take the first no for an answer. I guess. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> best best of luck with that. Did anyone else have any queries or, or questions for for Amanda and and uh, me? Thing? No. Well, in that case. Oh, oh you've thought of something else. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Did no, go for say, it. no I've, um, I forgot to mention this at the beginning. So where we're funded, mm. when we are funded and we put on an open day that's funded, um, we will hire porter cabins and um, lose porter lose, that kind of thing. But at the top of the drove, almost opposite, is a very posh garden centre. So we tend, to, and they've got beautiful loos in there. <laughs> so we tend to collaborate with the garden centre. And what we'll do is we will give um, every attendee a little voucher and they will get 10% off their tea and cake. So it, it does work. It's good to collaborate with organisations. That sounds brilliant. Mm. Uh, I, I had one final query because obviously it's very much focused on on the physicality of the site. Um, and mm. I just wondered how um, you've mentioned the access issues oh. with physically getting down there. Do you also, uh, in the nicest possible way, take the site out and about? Do you do um, talks and events yes. off site to, to those who maybe physically couldn't get onto onto the yes. uh, the encampment or equally might not think it's it's for them or might be put off by the the ruts in the road and therefore might be encouraged to to come along to something different later yes especially u3a um i will go deliver a talk wi as well um 
And then what we will do as a backup, because it tends to generate a lot of interest. I think Boudicca is our pool. Um, and uh, so we will work with that and we will put on, on transport and they'll meet us at the car park, the garden centre car park, and then we will take them over. So their cars are kept intact. But uh, I'll also do guided tours um, for fewer people and I'll meet them in the car park at the garden centre and then drive over because we've got four by fours, thankfully. And uh, yes, it takes a lot to break them. <laughs> Sounds like a challenge. And <laughs> I'm sure there are roads out there that, that, that could, could master that, but that's fascinating. Oh. And uh, yeah, the practicalities of, of, you know, working in a, in a site with no lose and everything. So it's, yeah, it's, it's amazing what you're, you're managing to to achieve and uh, and the engagement that you're you're obviously getting with your your local community. So long may it long may it continue and and hopefully lots of lots of repeat visits as well, sort of thing. But <laughs> um, unless anyone has any uh, queries that have sprung to mind, um, I'd just like to thank everyone for for coming along today. Uh, huge thanks again to Amanda for for your, you. your your time and your your presentation.